Hi, it's Todd and Todd Stuff here, and today we're going to talk about goat's foot levers. So I've got a, one of my 15th century munition bows here, which is set up for a goat's foot lever with the two pins. Um, now, let's say if we pick a date, let's say uh, 1100, um, crossbows, they had a, a wooden bow at the front, possibly composite, don't really know. Hadn't invented the stirrup yet. So they used to sit on, on the ground, put a foot on either side, draw the bow back. Now, you can shoot, oh, you can span, really quite a powerful bow like that. Um, I've never actually tried in that method with a big timber one, but I would have thought around about 300 pounds. Um, obviously, if you're used to it, you can span up more than that. Now, <clears throat> that's great, around about 1200 approximately, they invented stirrups. That's a great benefit, because what that means now is that you haven't got your hobnail boots on the belly of your bow, causing wear and weakness. Um, you don't have to stand on it with a foot on either side of the bow, which is another way of doing it, ramming it into the ground. It's now completely separate from the ground. Very useful. Then they go on through other methods like spanning belts and spanning hooks, uh, doubler pulleys and so on. But sooner or later, um, I suppose around about the early 1300s, 1300-ish, they invented the goat's foot lever. Now, this is a deceptively clever bit of kit. Now, you need two pins here, and they bear the back of these two legs. And what happens, you just pop those on there, and the two hooks here, you pop onto the string. Now, you see that everything articulates. Now, this handle could be locked solid. That doesn't have to articulate for the functionality of the lever, but it does make it much easier to carry. So they, they used to pivot them. Sometimes the levers were longer, sometimes they had a plate on the end um, that you could push on your thigh or your belly. There were quite a few different ways of spanning these things uh, with a goat's foot lever. Um, I've just chosen this one, I like this way. But what's really useful about the articulation here is that as it goes on, <clears throat> you've got a roundabout mm, mechanical advantage of let's say four to three approximately. So you haven't got that much advantage. But you know, I've got some strength in my arm, so that's okay. So I can start to pull that string back. Now, of course, at the beginning of the stroke here, that's where the bow is at its weakest. It's, deliver it's loading the levers, the lever, as little as it's ever going to do at the beginning. Now, I've got, like I said, maybe a four to one mechanical advantage, uh, four to three mechanical advantage, so it's not great in any way. But very rapidly, I pull that back. Now, as you can see now, that my advantage here has changed massively. That's reduced. This has obviously stayed fixed. So I'm now at maybe a two to one advantage, something like that. But because of the nature of this curve here on the lever, um, the more I pull it back, and the articulation, sorry, the more I pull it back, the better the mechanical advantage I have. Now, of course, you want that because the further the string gets back, you know, at this point here, let's just say I've got what, 20 pounds, 30 pounds, something, I don't know. By the time I get back here, I'm about halfway through the stroke, so it's not quite a linear thing. So we're now up to maybe 120, 150 pounds, something like that, as we come back. So I can now pull that back, but, but by the time I get to the end of the stroke here, the mechanical advantage is actually fantastic on this thing. So if I pull it all the way back, actually I'll just set the nut just in case I cock it. There we go. So if I now pull it all the way back, you can see I'm using my hand, that's fine. But now I can actually just do it on one finger. You know, it's an extraordinary thing. I'm almost there. So I'm holding probably about 350 pounds. So I'm all the way back and I'm now still doing it on one finger. By the way, never let go of the lever at this point. So I'm just gonna let it back. So it really is a very clever device. And these were used, like I say, from the early 1300s. I'm not sure the exact date, I'd have to go look it up. Um, early uh, 1400s, really, um, in terms of a sporting device, I mean, militarily probably they stopped as bows started to become a lot more powerful uh, around about 1400, 1430, they stopped really being a, a battlefield weapon in any sense, but they, or battlefield way of spanning. Um, but they did carry on uh, really well through to the Victorian period. So let's just say 1900, you know, you could still get a goat's foot lever for your bow. Um, 
fantastically useful, very, very clever, easy and fast way to span. Um, Time-wise, you get a shot off um, about eight or nine seconds, something like that. Uh, you know, so it really is a very quick thing. You can shoot a bow up to 550 pounds, maybe, uh, with a goat's foot lever. This one's a little light for that kind of draw weight. Um, sort of about 450 is as high as I want to go on this one. Um, but you can certainly have a slightly bigger lever, again, with that sort of push pad on the end that you used to see, particularly in Italian manuscripts. You'll be able to get up well from there. Um, so the goat's foot lever, absolutely fabulous bit kit. Um, it was, of course, superseded by uh, windlass, um, which were fantastic, um, enormously powerful tools uh, and relatively cheap to manufacture. And then the other, of course, big battlefield one was the Cranequin, which was never really favoured um, in England. Not sure about sort of Flanders and France, um, but certainly within Bohemia and Germany um, and Italy, the Cranequin was massively favoured. Uh, but it's a very expensive bit of kit. Um, again, enormously powerful, fantastic uh, ratio advantage on it. So you can span, I think some of the German bows go up to like a ton and a half, you know, crazy numbers. Um, so there you are, the goat's foot lever. All steel, fully articulating, uh, very quick to use, very easy to use. Great invention. Thank you very much.